Life Audio. You're listening to Therapy and Theology, and I'm your host, Carly McLear. This podcast is a space where we explore popular topics and questions related to the convergence of faith, feelings, spiritual formation, and more. My prayer is that through these conversations, we will grow in our awareness of who we are as beloved children of God, learn to acknowledge our needs and emotions with curiosity and compassion, and rediscover the purpose and power of our unique stories through the lens of the gospel. As a licensed therapist and ministry leader, I want to give voice to the many questions we face while cultivating a clearer view of how our faith informs our healing journey. I don't have all the answers, but I am committed to going deeper and walking together. So whether you've been to therapy or know exactly what you believe when it comes to theology, I want to invite you to join this journey as we fearlessly name the complexities of our present reality and press into the hope of the gospel story. So are you ready? Let's jump into today's question and begin this journey together. Hello and welcome back to Therapy and Theology. I'm excited today to start a mini-series over the next several weeks on the importance and the purpose of our emotions. Now, whether or not you are a feeler by nature or not, we all have emotions and have been created with the capacity to feel emotions in a very large range. We all have different experiences when it comes to emotions, right? And I think this is important to be able to explore. And so today I want to kind of give us a baseline or a foundation for understanding emotions. And then over the next few weeks, we're going to build off of that and explore the the discipleship of when hard emotions come, what do we do with those? Because I think for many people, and I see this in my own life and in my clients, is that We have certain emotions that we're okay with, and then we have these other emotions that we kind of dismiss or deny because maybe they feel uncomfortable or we have some beliefs around them that are frankly not even true. Oftentimes when I ask my clients what comes to mind when they think of the word emotions, the immediate association is often sadness or weakness. And this is a really important association, right? As we create inform our beliefs around our emotions, it actually impacts significantly the way we experience or think of how we're feeling. You know, I think of the development of our emotional awareness, and this happens in various ways, right? We are largely impacted by the way our family system addressed emotions, by the way our subcultures addressed emotions. And although there are select few emotions that maybe we have an easy time acknowledging like joy or excitement or even surprise, yet when we arrive to uncomfortable feelings, it's harder to identify, withstand, manage, or even understand what's going on inside of us. Oftentimes, the result of our upbringing and personality, in addition to social messaging and just lack of attunement to our emotions, creates conflict both internally in our bodies and externally in our relationships. And maybe you often become shut down or distant in social situations, or maybe you experience a significant amount of anxiety at work or when you're alone or when you're with people. And maybe anger is an easy triggered emotion by simple annoyances or tears come to your eyes when you least expect them. These are important aspects of what's going on internally. And so the question I'm often asked in therapy is, why do I feel this way? I think for a lot of people, myself included, this is a hard question to ask because when we acknowledge, right, what's happening inside of us, there's a story behind it. There's information that needs to be revealed. uh, And sometimes that information can be difficult. But I also want to give a disclaimer here because the psychoeducation and this discussion on emotions, I don't want it to be a substitute for actual therapy. So I'm hopeful that we can walk together in this and explore this, but also want to encourage those of you listening that maybe are acknowledging some emotions that are bringing up some deeper things to sit with a therapist to find that support in addition to doing this personal work. 
What I often see within both therapy and in the Christian circles is that many of us tend to dismiss or deny the presence or the intensity of our emotional experience. And this can be for many reasons, but we can make excuses for our actions or we can seek to distract ourselves and distance ourselves from whatever distresses us or think of the feelings as maybe unholy or a display of our lack of spiritual maturity. The common Christian responses to uncomfortable emotions that I see that can be damaging are things like, you know, I was told I need to pray more or I just need to trust the Lord in all circumstances. And although these are truths that come from scripture, they tend to distort the object of our distress and oftentimes can connect us to a belief that our emotion is a sign of a lack of faith. And that's not true. This way of thinking only increases our motivation to run from the feelings or to disconnect from ourselves. Yet, as we come to find with any attempt to escape our emotions, they just become heavier and heavier to carry. And so our bodies and minds often pay the toll for our attempts to distract ourselves from our emotional distress. We can self-medicate, we can load up our schedules and social calendars to distract ourselves from the reality that something is not right. The consequences of this method though, right, are damaging both to our bodies and to our souls. The problem with distressing emotions, I think, from both a personal perspective and from my work is that they uncover vulnerability, don't they? No one likes the discomfort of difficult emotions, yet many of us, I don't think, have developed what therapists call distress tolerance skills. Becoming quickly overwhelmed by the presence of distress in its various forms, we can freeze, we can find quick fixes and oftentimes unhealthy ways to just subdue the symptoms and try to move on with our lives. In addition, our feelings are largely based on messages on our, our upbringing, and these can be from formative experiences. This impacts the way that we function even subconsciously by motivating us for the need for safety, security, and social connectedness. One of the largest contributors, I think, to our emotional crisis today as a society is that we have not learned to validate our feelings. And this is a systemic issue, right? Passed down through family culture and through um, just beliefs about emotional health, we each learn how to deal or not deal with our emotions in various ways. Yet within the family of God, I think it's so powerful that we can be brought into a different perspective on understanding our emotions and the experiences we face within a broken world. There is such a need for healthy formation in this area of our lives. And I believe the Bible provides a guide and grace for us to develop an awareness and a practice to acknowledge and understand our emotions given by God to draw us closer to Him and to others. So today, I want to begin with a simple education on our emotions that we can build off of as we explore specific topics in the weeks to come, like fear, doubt, anger, shame, guilt, and grief. So let's create some working knowledge around emotions and their purpose. And then each week we will dive into how we process those emotions and what to do with them. So number one, I think it's important to acknowledge from a physiological, clinical perspective, I guess you could say, that emotions are signals of significance. I think we miss this completely in so many different ways, but neurologically, our brain has an emotion center, and that emotion center is telling us something. Author of The Body Keeps the Score notes this. He says, neuroscience research shows that the only way we can change how we feel is by becoming aware of our inner experience and learning to befriend what's going on inside of us. As long as we keep secrets and suppress information, we are fundamentally at war with ourselves. The crucial issue is allowing yourself to know what you know, and that takes enormous courage. I think this is such a beautiful thing because this can reframe the way we view our emotions, right? When we acknowledge that it's it's important, number one, and it's courageous to be able to acknowledge what's happening inside of us, it can shift us away from maybe pushing those emotions away, but acknowledging them and seeing where they take us. This can be really powerful. So in addition to the significance of our emotional signals, I think it also shows us that we have a soul aspect to our nature. We are created by God, right? And in that belief and understanding, we acknowledge that we are created by God and like God. The Imago Dei in us has the capacity for emotions. 
And this is not simply because of our fallenness in our broken world, but God specifically has the capacity for emotions. When we look at scripture, we can see God feels. And so when we acknowledge this, that our emotions come through our divine nature, we can have more value for them in our lives. And then thirdly, I think the most important thing for this foundation is acknowledging that our emotions are a huge support to us socially and spiritually. Emotions are a gift, and we were made for connection, right? Although fractured by sin in our world, we can find redemption through bringing our emotions and concerns and burdens to the Lord. And this starts with listening to God's voice and reorienting our feelings and what they mean and looking at them from the awareness of the significant signs in our bodies, understanding the soul aspect, and then how it supports social and spiritual connection. And I hope that as we look deeper into feelings and understanding the significance of the symptoms and what scripture says about them, we can develop the skills to disciple them well in our lives. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Therapy and Theology. If you have a question or topic you would like discussed on a future episode, please feel free to email me or drop it in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe to have each week's episode instantly downloaded to your podcasts and see the show notes for resources mentioned in this episode. To access more content and join my monthly email list for the latest updates and info, visit my website at carlymarkwilliam.com.